traditional Eucharist 
Lord's Supper or Holy Communion tonight because of our physical distance. But we'll be serving one another the love feast, which John Wesley borrowed from the Moravian evangelists that he met in the Georgia colony in 1737. He brought it back to England and it was part of the Methodist movement and still practiced in the Moravian churches of North and South America. And so we're grateful that we could be together as we do this. Just simple things, simple bread, simple drink. And we join together with our hearts. The grace of the Lord Christ be with you. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord who has prepared for us a feast of love. As we prepare to sing our hymn today, we ask that you stand where you are, if you are able, in your homes, wherever you are, to stand so that we can sing together, Yesu, Yesu. Let us pray. Father of earth and heaven, feed the spirits of your children with the grace of true and immortal bread. Grant to us and all of humanity the sweetness of your pardoning grace in Jesus Christ, who is the manna of your love. Amen. Tonight we turn to the gospel according to John, to the 13th chapter. The scene in the upper room that John gives us is not one where he institutes the Lord's Supper, but where he washes the disciples' feet. Hear these words. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You'll never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, 
though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've set you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Want a cup of coffee? I would love one. I just love chocolate. <laughs> We're in love. <laughs> God so loved the world. Love. It can be a warm, fuzzy, feel-good kind of word. We use it to describe our affinity for all kinds of things. We say we love our mamas. And we say we love the latest fashion accessory. We throw it around so loosely that I'm afraid it's lost some of its oomph. And some of love's enchantment goes right out the window when we hear that Jesus said, this is my commandment. My commandment, he said, that you love one another I mean, thou shalt and thou shalt not aren't usually thrown together with a feel-good feeling of love and being in love and loving your mama. Love isn't supposed to be something you have to do. Yet here, in the Gospel of John, that's precisely what Jesus tells us to do. Love one another. Well, maybe Jesus had never been in love. Maybe he doesn't know what love's all about. Or maybe he does. Jesus was talking about a kind of love which may or may not have anything to do with the way we feel or whether we like or dislike someone else or anybody with whom we have any personal affinity at all. This kind of love, called agape in Greek, is sometimes referred to as Christian love. Sometimes it's also translated, like in the King James Version of the Bible of the New Testament, it's translated as charity. And while we may have a warm, fuzzy, feel-good feeling that comes along with it, we might not. Because you see, agape is a matter of choice. It's a matter of deliberate action. It's not something we fall into or out of. It's like one writer put it, love is a decision. In other words, we will it. This love this agape that Jesus commands isn't a pious feeling. It's not even a synonym, not even close for really like. It is to be for another in spite of what we may be feeling at the time. It is to act in another's interest and for their sake 
in spite of what it might cost us. This I command you, love one another. It hardly feels like love when you're told you have to do it. Keeping Christ's commandment to love, even to the point of laying down one's life for someone else, doesn't just happen. It doesn't just come about when the chemistry gets right. Or if we just kind of buckle down and try harder. This commandment of love requires more than our best effort. I think our problem might be that we're having a hard time trying to love the unlovable because we keep on trying to love on our own terms. With conditions that we set. With parameters that we draw and say, this is going to be love outside of here, I don't know so much. Our problem is that we haven't tapped into the source of this love. It's the love that God has for us. The why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us kind of love. That kind of love that enables and empowers us to love as Christ commanded Otherwise, his commandment would be just one more item on a list of legalisms and check in of the boxes of the do's and don'ts. It's in Christ that we find the ultimate expression of this agape love. He would give his life so that we could experience abundant life in the love he has for us. And this commandment to love would be impossible if all we had was our feelings. And it's not only that we have just a good example in Jesus. We've been given the gift of Jesus, the gift of himself. His life is the source of the love of his commandment. So we gather tonight, wherever we may be, at this agape meal, the ones of meal, kinds of meals that we see in the book of Acts where they gather together and hear the apostles' teachings and pray for one another and break bread together, into which was included the Lord's Supper. We're just doing this love feast part. Because by the power of God's spirit, we're bound together. We can love as he loves, even when folks aren't very likable. Love one another. It's the law. Now I know we've got a lot of restrictions on our movements, and some might call that the law. But you know, I know of people who are going into places, and they're not, they're not putting towels around their waist. They're putting on Tyvek suits and protective gear. They're putting on masks to help care for those in their hour of need. There are those who are out every day helping others. Not because they have to. Law says you have to. But love says you can. And love makes you want to. And that's the important for thing, thing for us to remember at a time like this. That while we might be separated by distance, physical distance, it's the love of Christ that binds us together, not only with one another, but with all those in the world who are working their way through this COVID virus pandemic. And all the while we remember that whatever befalls, Jesus' love is never going to stop. It's never going to go away. It's never going to betray us. It won't make us sick, but it will make us whole. And we gather as the communion of saints, even from the times of the apostles, around a kind of a dinner table to receive this feast of love remembering what it is that Jesus has done for us and what he would go on to do 
when he left this table in an upper room in Jerusalem. Love one another. Sounds like a good law to me. Amen. God is with us. We are not alone. Christ is with us. The risen one has met us, blessed us, and fed us on the road that leads us home. The community of the Holy Spirit is with us. We gather as the communion of saints, joined in the fellowship of God's love. With brothers and sisters absent in body, but united in spirit, we pray. Holy One, Trinity of grace and power, maker and sustainer, the one who loves, our Father and friend. Thanks be to you, O God. You are like a father who gives us bread, not stones, and like a mother who never forgets her own. From the beginning of life to the closing of time, you are the one who is with us to the end. And so with all who breathe on earth and all who sing in heaven, we praise your name and join creation's song. Be present at our table. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but with have the light of light. And we now light a candle as a sign of Christ present with us. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. You are our risen Lord in whom light has conquered darkness. Rest in the light and be assured of the power and presence of the risen Christ. Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here is the story of God's covenant of steadfast love with God's people. We are assured of God's presence with us at all times and in all places, even in the midst of fear and difficulty. Rest a moment in the quiet and know the stories of God's love and grace can, can sustain you wherever you are. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scriptures have said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now hold your glass of water. Without water, there can be no life. In creation, the Spirit of God hovered over the water and brought forth light. God brought John to the Jordan River to call us to repentance. We were nourished in the water of a womb. We were baptized by water and the Spirit into God's family. Water reminds us of the gifts of creation that God has so abundantly given us and of his love and grace we have all received. Drink the water slowly. Feel it flow into your body. Know that God sends his love to flow into your body and your soul.
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Take the piece of bread in your hands. Christ broke the bread and fed the multitudes. Christ broke the bread and formed a new covenant with his closest friends and with all who break bread in remembrance of him. Christ was made known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Bread reminds us that, just like individual grains of wheat are scattered together to make a single loaf, we who are scattered are one body in Christ. Break and eat the piece of bread that you're holding. Remember the times that you've received bread in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Remember the presence of Christ in that moment. Be assured that Christ is with you in every moment of your life. And in silence now, allow Christ's love to surround you. Will you pray with me? United with Christians around the globe on this Monday Thursday, let us pray for the church, the earth, our troubled world, and anyone who is in need. Blessed are you, holy God, for the church. Gather all the faithful around your presence in the word. Strengthen the body of your people even when we cannot assemble for worship. Grant to all pastors and church leaders faithfulness for their ministry at this time, and be with those who are preparing for baptism and confirmation. Hear us, holy God, for your mercy is great. Blessed are you, bountiful God, for this good earth and for the flowering of springtime. Save dry lands from destructive droughts. Protect the waters from pollution. Allow in this time the planting of fields for food. Make us into caregivers of your creation. Hear us, bountiful God, for your mercy is great. Blessed are you, sovereign God, for our nation. Inspire all people to live in peace and concord. Grant wisdom and courage to heads of state and to legislators as they face these challenging times. Lead our elected officials to champion the cause of the needy. Hear us, sovereign God, for your mercy is great. Blessed are you, faithful God, for you accompany suffering humanity with love. Abide wherever the coronavirus has struck. Visit all who mourn, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear both present and the future. Support physicians, nurses, and home health aides, medical researchers, first responders, and public health officials around the world. Hear us, faithful God, for your mercy is great. Blessed are you, gracious God, for you care for the needy, feed the hungry, embrace the distress, house the homeless, nurse the sick, and comfort the dying. Especially we pray for those we name before you now.
Hear us, gracious God, for your mercy is great. Blessed are you, loving God, that your Son knelt before us, your unworthy servants. Preserve our lives, alleviate our anxiety, and receive now the petitions of our hearts. Hear us, loving God, for your mercy is great. Blessed are you, eternal God, for all you have died in the faith, and bring us at last with them into your everlasting glory. Hear us, eternal God, for your mercy is great. Receive, merciful God, our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ the true host of our meal of life, who died and rose, that we might live with you now and forever. Amen. Please stand together at home, wherever you are, as a community of faith, in the love of Christ, may we sing together what wondrous love is this. In these days of anxiety and uncertainty, may we always go in Christ's name into all our interactions, real or virtual, as a people of hope. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with kindness 
and give us peace. Amen.